Well, praise the Lord. Um, tonight is a long, uh, is the last night in a long series of meetings. For some of you, it might just have been just this week, but we have been going on for uh, months now. And uh, we thank God for His grace, thank God for His mercies. And this last week has been really a reliance on spiritual strength to complete this race. Uh, and um, the next um, week, uh, we are going off to Australia. I believe Israel and his family is going on Sunday night uh, after the church, and I'll be going Monday morning. Uh, and um, then we are having um, prayer meetings in Australia. And I said that uh, uh, for those of you fasting along, uh, we let you break your fast on Saturday, tomorrow, and Sunday, and also Monday. Uh, and uh, then uh, for that, uh, you replace that fast. We have a three-day fast on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, which we will be doing also in Australia. And during those three days, we're going to pray for the U.S. elections. And uh, some people say, oh, no, what's that relevance to me? Remember, at the moment, anything that happens in the U.S., it does affect the world, directly or indirectly, uh, even your very jobs, vocation, businesses, and every area. So uh, we're going to pray. But for us, it's not just only that area. Uh, but it's also because uh, of what we see in the future and the importance of this uh, next president who will be the last president of the United States. Uh, and uh, so we want to pray along on that. We have our Christian brethren uh, from the USA as they also fast along on that. And uh, <clears throat> of course, after tonight, there's an all night prayer. So tonight, for many of us, it's like a long haul. Uh, and uh, I'm glad that we have reached last night. Uh, when we began to see this week, I said, Lord, this week takes supernatural energy for me. And He has supplied the energy. Uh, and uh, tomorrow, you know, I'll be my Sabbath day. And I'm not quite Sabbath. I've got a lot of things, logistics to catch up before I go off to uh, Australia for a week. Uh, we'll be back, of course. We won't miss any Sunday for this time. Uh, and uh, we'll be back. Uh, uh, we, are, we are here on Sunday, and we'll be back by the next Sunday. Uh, preaching normal services and uh, so the God is good. Now, Lola has done many things and uh, in uh, the miracles that has happened and uh, one of those is uh, healing testimony online. I just received this today and uh, it was uh, sent to Pastor Edra and then forwarded to me uh, from Lorraine Mills. I met Lorraine, haven't I? Mills, I'm not sure. Okay. I remember Lorraine somewhere there, man. Okay. Lorraine Mills. And it says, uh, it's um, October the 12th. Okay. So, dear Pastor Edrell, I'm writing to let you know that I believe I received my healing. I had numerous body symptoms that were not working right. Bladder issues, bowel issues, joint pain, low energy, chronic limb disease through my whole body, heart issues, stomach issues. During the last week's miracle services, as Pastor Johan would speak a word of knowledge, if that was wrong in my body, I claim it as mine. Wow, praise the Lord. Today, after listening to Tuesday's miracle service, I was able to walk a full mile which I have not been able to do for more than a month. I also actually feel hungry for the first time in more than a year. Yesterday, I was able to eat with no problems. I feel great. I have no pain. I have not had to have a nap today either. And I believe in my heart and speak with my mind, declare that my healing is manifesting and that I'm healed in every body, organ, function and that my healing and system is working correctly in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Johan and Pastor Ariel, for being obedient to the written word as well as a spoken word. Praise God. All glory and honor goes to my Father, God, and to my Savior, King, Lord, and my Master, Jesus Christ, loving Christ, Lorraine Mills. Amen? God is good in all that He has been doing. Because among us, whereas of you have been receiving your touch and your miracles, and I talk about the energizing of God uh, in your life. Uh, today, as some of you were standing, worshipping, and different things, I sense different things that the Lord wants to touch uh, 
in your life. Just open your heart to allow the Lord to touch you and, um, and minister into your life. Um, and uh, aren't you the two sisters that come all the way from Africa over this weekend? Hey? UA and for UAE. Okay. And you were from somewhere else, but you went there to work. Okay. Kenya, that's right. I remember from Kenya, Africa. They're from UAE. And uh, so they're here with us tonight. Uh, and uh, also on Sunday, I believe. Okay, welcome. Uh, and um, so we got various people from over listening. Uh, you might not realize our on online congregation is bigger than our physical congregation. Uh, and, um, but uh, that is soon changing as we begin to do the crusades. Uh, and, um, which will begin uh, the next year because um, we have begun the decade of power. Time to move out and uh, do what the Lord instructs us. Uh, and the ministry of an evangelist, uh, apostle evangelist has begun. So we're going to go forth and do that uh, and, uh, in obedience to the Lord. I was mentioning about how tonight, as you open your hearts to various things, God wants to touch and heal. Uh, and I could pick up different things even as you sit. It's just like this whole room is like just a little auditorium. And uh, Holy Spirit just x-raying different things. Uh, and um, yes, yeah, a kneecap problem over an extreme left. Uh, some uh, T problem. Yeah, some jaw and T problem over in this section. Uh, and... Um, uh, various things, uh, just a slight touch of a bladder problem also in this section. Uh, and um, thank you, Lord. Some slight, not very um, severe hearing problem up there. Uh, and we thank you, Father, for various things that you would touch. Uh, itchiness in the eye, also in that row. Thank you, Father, we bless you. We thank you for all that you want to do, you touch. Um, you're going to minister, Father, to each heart in each life. Remember that God will be able to touch and heal each one of you, even if your ailment or sickness is not called, uh, because it takes time. God sometimes just pick up people at random, just for us to be able to uh, reach out to Him. I know that He is around, He is alive, and He is a God who sees all things. He's just like the Lord told Nathaniel, you know, before you were under the fig tree, I saw you. But he doesn't do that to all the disciples. Uh, only at random, as the Lord so chooses to do so. We've been touching on different things last night. We talked about the atmosphere of faith. And uh, I preached uh, longer than my normal Miracle Service sermon. But it was important, and we took time uh, to do various things because I wanted to make sure uh, that it's recorded that uh, uh, for eternity and for the rest of posterity, that uh, for those who are here, that, that those sermons are to help get rid totally of the spirit of unbelief in a person's life. Uh, and at least when they hear through it, it will prepare them to receive the miracle that God has for their life. Teachings are geared towards that. Teachings are geared towards that. And tonight, uh, the last of the miracle service of teaching, I'm going to talk about the desperate cry, the, or the cry of desperation. That comes in every person's life that you reach a point of desperation. And uh, so sometimes uh, when you reach a point of desperation, you do not know what to do because you know there's a Jesus. Many people in desperation, when they come to Jesus, does receive some measure of help. Uh, and in fact, all of them received help when Jesus was physically alive. But now that Jesus is invisible and the representations of Jesus are to his ministers, his servants, and uh, or Christians who walk with the Lord, and uh, the success rate of people who are desperate, reaching out to God through people that they know, churches that they know, or human representations that they know, the closest that they know, uh, to reach God to them, that... Um, although they could reach God directly to Jesus and in prayer and calling on Jesus' name. But uh, people need sometimes uh, help to reach out into, to touch God or have someone believe in them uh, who physically they can relate to, they can draw them closer to God. And 
not all succeed in breaking through onto our Lord Jesus. I'd like to talk about why and what is the problem. The cry of desperation is a point when a person reach where they decide that there's no other help they can get but God. That does not mean that they totally give up all natural means or aid or natural help or medicinal help that will relieve their symptoms, their pain or whatever makes them comfortable in order to live their life from day to day. But more or less there is a resignation in your heart and your mind that no one can help me now but God. And if there's a God, if there's a God who is there, who hears the cry of His people, who hears those who cry desperately for Him, then they want to reach out to this God. And like I said last night, the only reason God heals is because of His love. And God is not obligated to do anything more for the planet Earth. Not at all. He has already, even before Jesus came, given enough laws and blessings on the earth. And the laws and blessings will work for good or for bad to however humans use it. Unfortunately, human through history and generation upon generation, through city upon city, community, countries, that goes up and down. Unfortunately, a lot of innocent collateral damage. The preceding generation suffers from the generation sins before that and so forth. Or a community sin and a whole group of people suffer. You might think this is unfair, but the stories are in the Bible too. Remember how one man's sin, Achan's sin, caused thousands of people to die at AI. So it's always, the laws of God are always very clear in the Bible. Uh, and uh, innocent people do suffer, do die, become collateral damage in the midst of people who break God's laws like a drunkard who drive and kill innocent passengers or bystanders or pedestrians. And uh, whose fault is that? Well, it's very hard to put any blame on anyone. Then when you place the blame on the drunkard, then you trace the drunkard's life that, you know, a person has been neglected uh, and a person has gone through a traumatic time, but maybe even abuse. And then you try to look at the abuser and uh, oh, the abuser has been abused himself, and you keep tracing and tracing, tracing. Guess what? In the end, all sin will lead back to Adam and Eve. So you say, oh, are we going to blame them? Cannot. Cannot. Because other, then there will be no judgment. Everyone can blame somebody else's sin. No matter, and here's the thing, no matter how we suffer the collateral damage of the community, or we inherit in our genes weaknesses that give us a propensity towards ailments or whatever, we have to live the best that we can and rise up from there. We have to have that positive approach. Not looking to the past like yesterday I said, but taking the present and don't look too far in the future, but looking at the present and creating a new future from that. Because if we keep looking somewhere, someplace to blame, we will never get ourselves out of our predicament. So there are desperate cries in the Bible that people have for help. And here's the interesting thing. God sometimes allows His people to reach a point of desperation and sometimes beyond desperation before He shows His hand. Because God has His own timetable and God has His own um, arrangement of how things were to take place. Although He knows all things, we talk about Mark chapter 5 and some of these desperate people who got healed, like the woman with the issue of blood, I bring her up again. In Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Now a certain woman had flowed blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. That's desperate. 
When she heard about Jesus, she came with, behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Remember, she is desperate now. No more money. See, he says she has spent all that she had. So she got no more money. She is still suffering. And the Bible says in verse 26 at the ending, the last word is, last two words, grew worse. It grew worse. So she is very desperate. Says when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Mirroring? Okay. No wonder I hear these echoes coming. Okay. Uh, mirroring. Is it on now? On my is on. And then I'm going to redo. Is that on? Okay, I gotta undo and do. Okay. Turn off. Okay. Start again. Nothing. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Okay, let me reboot it. Um, restart. Okay, that has got worse. Buttons doesn't work. Okay, I'm starting again. In the meantime, while waiting for this to load up, <clears throat> remember that um, even as we wait upon the Lord, and we hear through sermons, we worship, that in the days of Jesus, they did not have worship services. Most of the healing of Jesus took place in the streets, very rough places, and in public. Even the healing of uh, the lame man that took place in um, on the market streets, and. Um, we thank God that we got a nice atmosphere, air condition. But in those days of Jesus, there's no air condition. It's hot, sweaty, out in the streets. Ah, we got it at last. And, um, and they had to exercise their faith right in the public square. They had to raise their faith level to believe in the midst of the hustle and bustle of life. It's like getting your healing at a shopping mall. Think about the amount of concentration you need to have. So imagine this woman with the issue of blood being healed in a shopping mall. Not only that, think about wanting to go to a shopping mall in her condition. Definitely she was not there for shopping, of course we know. If, she was, if Jesus was there, then she was there. She heard Jesus in a shopping mall. Jesus was in the street. And she was desperate. I talk about a cry of desperation. 
So he says in verse 28, For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. So she made a quality decision. I'm not going away without this healing. Uh, I need it. I'm desperate for it. Jesus did talk about this dimension of desperation, which I talked about last week in a preaching. On, um, the persistent widow. And he says in uh, Luke chapter 18, he spoke a parable that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Now, I also want to read the ending part. What Jesus says in verse 8, Now I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? And then I talked about yesterday, some who believe for a while. Belief for a while is not faith. It is just one of the seed that fall on the ground. And they believe for a while. They might have even some results. But um, after that, uh, uh, they give up. So that belief for a while is not true faith. Uh, and um, that was the one uh, I used in uh, Luke chapter uh, 8, since you are there. In Luke chapter 8, and look at the phrase when Jesus was um, interpreting the parable. In verse 13, those, the ones on the rock, are those who, when they hear, they receive the word with joy. But they have no root. The nice question is, do you have roots in your life? They have no root. So when they have no root, that means everything is on the surface. Who believe for a while. Can you see the words? Believe for a while. That um, believe for a while Believe for a while. Never heard that expression. It means they believe, but the belief only lasts until the testing comes. When the temptation, trial, or testing comes, they give up. So that belief for a while is not real faith. It is just excitement, confidence. I don't think the Bible even considers it true faith. Because it represents the seed, the word that fall on the rock. The only seed that fall on good ground was the last one, number four. There's some that fall on the pavement, some fell among the, uh, the rocks and couldn't get roots in. Some fell among thorns and then a group fell on good ground. And that one was a real place. So this belief for a while is a great concern because in our modern church, many people will believe only when it's convenient for them to believe. Or sometimes we are driven to the place of desperation, then we start grasping for things to believe in that will pull out Pull us out of a situation. Fine enough, provided we find the word of God and the true, the truth and our Lord Jesus in time. Now let's go back to Luke chapter 18. At this persistent widow. In Luke chapter 18. And it says of her, remember Jesus was saying that when he comes, will he find faith? Now the faith that this widow had, he was trying to see persistent faith, but <coughs> she came across an unjust judge, which is uh, a paradox. A judge should not be unjust, but here's a, a judge who is unjust. So it's difficult. He got authority, but he was unjust. And uh, yet, she says, 
she came to him saying, get justice for me for my adversary. And he would not for a while. Now if the woman had believed for a while, depend on whose while was longer, the judge, you know, uh, he would not do for a while, a long while. But the woman believed longer than for a while. Then, after a while, the judge short a while, came to an end because the woman keep persisting. She says, though I do not fear God, nor regard men, <coughs> yet because this widow troubles me, I will venture, lest her continual coming she weary me. Hear what the Lord says. Hear what the unjust judge said. Shall not God, shall God not avenge <coughs> his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you, he says, God will avenge speedily. Now, he was just talking in the same context. Whether it be like God bringing justice or God delivering you or God bringing healing. It says, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? And you thought, okay, this could be, uh, you know, one of those cases. I know there is a woman uh, that is there. And uh, that you mentioned. But here's Mark chapter 10 in verse 46. Now when they came to Jericho, as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great multitude was following him. There was one blind man there who was desperate. That blind man had a name. He became a famous blind man. His name got in the Bible. He was no more blind of God's. His name was Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. He always sat by the road begging. Probably one of the city roads that lead out of the city and into the city. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he already heard a lot of things about him. He must have heard of Jesus healing. Remember, he's blind. In those days, there were no internet, TV, radio, uh, printed matter, printing not invented yet. People were using scrolls and writing. So whatever you hear is by word of mouth. People talking. He talked to people. He heard a lot about Jesus. And he must have been reached a point of desperation that day. Because he says, when he heard that it was Jesus passing by, no, Jesus must have seen him. Jesus never came to him. Jesus is just doing what he, Jesus does. He's just concentrating on what he wants to do. He began to cry out and say, Now, his words reveal he believed who Jesus was. Because he, 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 people say, well, Jesus is Nazareth. But he called him Jesus, son of David. Which means he was calling him the Messiah. So he says, Jesus, Son of Mercy, Jesus, he says, Son of David, have mercy on me. Then, why do you think easy for him? He got good schooling. He says in verse 48, many people tell him, shh, quiet. They, I said they keep quiet. That was Jesus passing by. And he is asking for help. And he got a good scolding. Remember, he's blind, scolded by seeing people. So, you know, you normally just uh, told, tag along. But he cried out even more. He cried out louder. Son of David! Have mercy on me! He had to cry loud enough above the crowd. Yeah. Remember, there's a big crowd there. 
scolding cannot stop him. So I want to ask you, how desperate are you? Is that desperation for the Lord to touch your life? Desperation alone is not, not enough, of course, but I'm just starting the point. That the people whom I see the Lord Jesus touch, all through the Bible, God has sometimes allowed them to reach a point of desperation before they saw a miracle. Think about uh, the barrenness <coughs> of um, Sarah and Abraham always have this in mind. And when God was close to him or talking to him, he mentioned that to God in Genesis 15. Because he's always just underneath his conscious mind. Something he wanted. A child of his own. And then there was Isaac and Rebecca, and remember, they were at first having problems conceiving, and they prayed and cried. There was Rachel, also desperate for a child. There are a lot of desperate people in the Bible. Then John, the Baptist father, Zechariah and Elizabeth, they were desperate. They prayed until they were so old and they forgot about it. Beyond desperation. When the angel says, I've come to answer your prayer. He already forgotten what prayer. It was prayed so long ago. Can you imagine when one day you're 90 years old and God says, i come to answer your prayer. And you say, excuse me, can you remind me again? <laughs> Why exactly did I pray? Before I accept this answer, what did I ask for? So they must have prayed on the desperation, but they never let their love for God waver. If you never had an answer to your prayers as long as Zacharias and Elizabeth, would you still love God? If you never had an answer to prayer like Abraham and Sarah for a long time, would you still love God? So the three friends of Daniel, Shadrach, Misha, and Banigo says, when they were put on trial before Nebuchadnezzar, they said, we know our God can save us. But even if it doesn't save us, we will not bow to your idol. What great love. Is your love for God conditional or unconditional? Is your love for God conditioned that God answers all your prayers? God give you all the blessings? God do all the wonderful things for you? Or is your love of God, love for God absolute? You know the other way is unconditional, absolute. You know that God loves all of us absolutely and unconditionally. His love never wavers. But how about our love for Him? And do you know what God is looking for in the human race? He is looking for lovers of God. Why do you think God is looking for, at the human race looking for sick people to heal? Of course he loves to heal. Of course he wants to heal. Why do you think God looking at the human race, looking for the poor to help them? Of course he wants to help the poor and the widows and the orphans. But our Lord Jesus says, the poor you will always have. In a way, he will also be saying, the sick you will always have. So what exactly is God looking for? God is looking for lovers of God. And great lovers come through difficult tasks of loving. You come through tests when your love is tested and you don't weigh well. That is why in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says that God has prepared. I have seen 
eye has not seen, not ear heard. Nor has he entered the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. So God is looking for people who are lovers of God. Think about it this way. The first fall, Adam and Eve. And then the human race that continued from them afterwards have been divided into two groups. A group that continue to love God, sometimes they are very small, and a group that does not love God, and one got outside their life, and instead turned to the devil and the devil's offer. The history of the Bible, not the history of mankind, the history of the Bible has shown that from Genesis to Revelation, it is a story of people who love God versus people who do not love God. God is not looking for perfect people. God is not looking for the most educated, the most talented, the richest, the most beautiful or handsome in form and shape. God is looking at people's hearts. And his eyes roam to and fro to see those who love him back. You know why? He has been loving us since creation. And most of us are like the nine lepers. We breathe his air. We are his creation. Like Romans chapter 1 says, we are his creation. And then we replace God with an image he, he made of animals or things. And we become ungrateful, unthankful. That is why there are more people who, who, who are ungrateful, unthankful, more people who take God for granted, who take creation for granted, than those who don't and say, I choose to love God and thank Him for the air I breathe, for the life I have, for whatever He has given me. I choose to acknowledge the God who has loved me. And the minimum I would want to do is to love Him back. To say thank you for loving me. Even if I have not come to know Jesus yet, there's so much of God. In Romans it says, God has already shown Himself and His attributes through His creation. There's enough to love God. On top of that, you discover that He sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. How much more can we hold our love back from Jesus? And do you know, even after Jesus Christ has come, and the message is preached to countless Christians, or people who were not Christians who became Christians, and you know, so many people call themselves Christians by name, but yet, when God looks at every church and denomination, denomination, ministry, every, in every country, does He see a people who love Him back? Or does He see a selfish group of people who are only looking for themselves, looking after themselves? Let's not forget, the history of the Bible records the search, of, the search for, of God for lovers of God. When He finds them, He takes them and shows them things He prepares for them. It is like God has been preparing for those who love Him. Now His mercy is such that He will save everyone who can be saved. But He puts those who love Him on a different category. And you know that is fair. That is very fair. Because not all of us were born with the same emotional capacity. Not all of us were born with the same intellectual capacity. Not all of us were born with the same uh, advantages, opportunities. Not all of us were born with the same gifts or talents or abilities. But in one thing, we all are equal. We all have the ability to love. 
we all have the ability to love. It's innate human ability God gave. To love someone, to love many people, and to love God. God gave us the same ability to love. Can you imagine that? When it comes, there are some things that are given equally. There are some things that are not given equally. But there are some things that are given equally. We all have the same capacity to love. And to choose to use the capacity to love God. That touches the very heart of God. So here is Bartimaeus. And he was sitting down, and then he hears this crowd going, and then he says, I, uh, who, who, by the way, what's all this noise going on? Somebody said, oh, don't you realize it's Jesus of Nazareth? Oh, you mean the one who does signs and wonders? Oh, yeah, he's the one. Oh, okay. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then everybody around school him. Quiet. I tell you, not for you to shout like that. And the more they shout, the more they scolded him. He shouted, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Until Jesus also stood still. What's that sound? Maybe the disciples heard it first. Could have been John, could have been Peter. Said, What's that sound? What's that noise? Oh, someone shouting for Jesus. Ignore him. Oh, and then the child keeps coming louder and louder and louder and louder. Because he was desperate. And then Jesus, he was walking. Jesus stood still. Can your desperation make the angels flying above stand still? Because all, most of the, you know, the foremost angels are here, Gabriel, Michael, Raphael, Fanuel, and the three spirit beings. But uh, let's talk about all the things going on in heaven, right? I'm sure God doesn't stop all of heaven just for this meeting. A lot of things have to go on in heaven. But can your desperation... And God, to reach out to God and to touch God, uh, doesn't mean that you have to shout so loud, drown all of us out, and you bring your hair out. <laughs> None of us can say anything because you're the only one who can talk. But uh, your heart cry to God in your desperation, that you reach out to God in, in, in your heart. Then, somewhere in the throne room in heaven, the Father and the Ancient of Days sitting there. Uh, Jesus can be more than one place at a time. He's here and he can be at the right hand of God. Uh, and, here. And, then, and, and then the, f the Father would look around and notice something. And then he allow all those angels and four living creatures and 24 others all to hear. And then they say, what's, what's that that the Father has amplified? What's that? And he goes, Boom, 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 boom. Say, what's that? And under the whole heaven, imagine the whole heaven might stop and hear the sound. Boom, 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 boom. Say, what's that? And then finally the father quietly says, that's a heartbeat of someone who loved me a lot in Singapore. Can your heartbeat of love reach so high in the God that you gain God's attention? But the Emmaus, his desperation, in spite of opposition, caused Jesus to stand still. And then Jesus says, Command him to come. Bring him here. The whole procession with the multitudes, there could, be, there could be thousands of people who follow behind and in front. All stop. 
one man, one blind man, stop the entire procession. Because Jesus stopped. So when everybody finally stopped, you know, I don't know which was the last cry, whether Jesus says, command him to, to come, and but before the command reached him, because uh, they sent someone there to fetch him, he was still there shouting, Jesus! People say, hey, 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 enough, enough, Jesus, Jesus already hurt you. <laughs> Call for you. Oh, okay. And look at what he did. This is his desperation. In verse 50, he threw aside his garment. Do you see that what? Because you know what he wants. Guess what he wants? No, no, blind man. You know what do you think he will ask Jesus for? A piece of gold, please. A blind man, what do you think he will come and ask Jesus for? Maybe some, one piece of fish and one loaf? A blind man, what do you think? When you come to Jesus, what will he ask for? You know, just a kiss on the cheek, my Lord Jesus. A blind man, what do you think he wants Jesus to do for him? He wants to see. So when everything stops, you know why he threw all his garments away? Because he says, I don't need them anymore. These are my last few steps of blindness. He was desperate and he said, this is it. I'm getting this. And when he threw away his garment, right, there's a crowd there, and somebody caught it and said, But you don't want this anymore. So you know, you keep it. <laughs> and he was brought all the way to Jesus. Jesus, of course, knows what he wants. And then Jesus said, What do you want me to do for you? And he said, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. Great faith comes from great fights, as maybe Gospel says. Great faith comes from great tests. That's what the Bible says, same thing. He had faith. But his faith was, now, now is my chance to reach to Jesus. And immediately, he received his sight, and he joined the procession. Hallelujah! <laughs> I can imagine, suddenly he can see he said, Oh Lord Jesus, now we walk together. Hallelujah. Akunda <laughs> Awaketa. Hallelujah. And he was so, so excited because he can see. Everybody has been seeing for donkey years. It's the first time he can see. And he was so excited. He said, Jesus, I'm going to go before you. Uh -huh. I'm just going to go before you, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Oh. And now Jesus, he didn't ask for it. Now he got a worshiper next to him. <laughs> Worshipping all the way. Desperation. So the point that I'm saying here is God reaches us at our point of desperation at the point of desperation wherever we are as we are desperate and we know that there is a miracle waiting and you reach out to Jesus you find Jesus waiting for you 
So there is a cry of desperation. And faith doesn't believe for a while. It believes until the object of faith is received. No matter how long it takes. Number two. God doesn't need us to have a reason why He should heal us, to heal us. I repeat. God doesn't need a reason why He should heal us, to heal us. He will heal us because He loves us. And the price for our healing has already been paid at the cross of Calvary. When Jesus died for all sickness and diseases. But number two, it's good to give God a reason. And I show you someone who is desperate. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Her name is Hannah. She was the second wife. Her husband was Panina. Oh no, her husband was uh, Elkanah. He married Panina and Hannah. Uh, their names all rhyme. You can write poetry. Elkanah with Panina and Hannah. The children can be Anna and Bana, Banana. <laughs> But I tell you, that family is only rhyme in name. They constantly quarrel at home. What their names could rhyme for any poetry better than, you know, uh, Woods, Woods, Spear, whatever. At home, it was World War Two, <laughs> And there were two fighting. They were the Axis and the Allies. It says there, can you see the word, her rival? Her rival. See, I told you, there was war going on. Her rival provoked her severely. Because Penina had children. Hannah got no children. So always, you say, ha, huh, ha, huh, every day. No, not only that, you know how women can do. Shoot a few missiles there. <laughs> and you know how they can do. One eye, one look. Whoa, that is worse than a missile. No, ICBM missile. <laughs> and then they know how to drop a few nuclear missiles. Okay, one day, another purple seeker. <laughs> that would be a nuclear bomb or something like that. In the house. Tells us here, she was so miserable. How long did that war last? That? Well, longer than World War II. At least World War II was a four, four or five years kind of thing. Uh, and um, six years, you know what I mean? 19, if you mentioned from 1939 to 1945. Uh, and it says, year by year, year by year, it was a constant battle. And she, she went up to the house of the Lord. She provoked her until she, she provoked. You know what she wanted to see? She wanted to see until all the radiation, the nuclear missile, the ICBM missile, and whatever else, plus the submachine gun that she should. Until whatever she shot at her, until the tears start coming out. Then she said, walk away. You know? Make her cry. Oh, what a world war. And uh, don't know, don't know. I one thing uh, I don't know how the husband survived. <laughs> oh, where he was in the war, you know. Maybe you know while they were playing Axis and Ally, he was Switzerland. <laughs> so you know, you're welcome to me. I'm Switzerland. So you know. So whatever he was. In the end, the husband told her. Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? 
Oh, his reasoning was very good. But I tell you, woman's reasoning even better. <laughs> Hannah, if she could reply, would say, No, 100 sons or so now. <laughs> <laughs> You're not better. No, 10 sons are good enough. <laughs> and so he says, You know, as if he doesn't know what was going on. So, Hannah arose, finished eating, drinking in Shiloh. And uh, then there she was, one, year, one day, she was in bitterness of soul. She prayed. Now every year she cried, God, please open my womb. Please open my womb. So I want those of you, when you have been prayed for, you've been touched, whether you've been partially healed or you're totally healed, don't you ever give up. Don't you ever give up. Because if God has begun something in you, I give you my full assurance. He never, never leaves it unfinished. Amen. Same like, you know, your friend over there. And you had a good day today, sir, and you saw good light throughout. <laughs> he continues to see who never could see any light before. Because God has started a healing. In his eyes. And tonight we're going to pray for God to continue that work. Finish out what God wants to do. Whatever God has begun, don't give up. Don't give up. Even if after tonight, you feel that your answer didn't come. There is still a God up there. And as I told you, we continue in the ministry of healing and miracles. We will come back to Singapore again and do miracle services, but not in the same format. We will first go to different countries that need us. We will go to the stadiums and big churches that they are already organizing. And we might do one, if not even two. Cynthia, you're hearing it could be two, in two places or three places even. Uh, but we will split them up into separate things. But we organize it in one shot. We do crusades, healing crusades where God will do signs and wonders. The same assemble of angels and spirit beings are going forth. And then, when a lot of people realize, and it becomes second nature to them, to know that there is a possibility that tonight could be my night of healing in America service, then the faith is different. You know that faith for healing there's faith that healing is mine now. There's faith that I know I am going to be fully well tonight. These are all subtle, subtle differences in faith growing. But you don't have to psych yourself up emotionally. You don't have to shout to make it happen. But the most important thing is to be at the right place at the right time in the right atmosphere. And when the healing is yours, it is always yours. No demon, no fallen angel, no circumstances, no crowds, no rebuke from the crowd, no scolding, no persecution. And block you from receiving what is yours. And Hannah was desperate. But this is the second point. Every year she prayed, no results. One year, her prayer changed. She says, in verse 11, and this one she said in her heart, because her lips only move a bit. There were no sounds coming out. That's why Eli thought she was drunkard. She made a vow. And she said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me. And now forget your maidservant because she feels that she's forgotten. She's losing the war. 
like the Germans have conquered the whole continent. And she is like little Britain, constantly under attack by V2 rockets. No way out. Do you know the war only changed? When America entered the war. Only when USA entered the war. Suddenly fresh troops start coming. So, something was changing for her that night. And she says, if you just give me one child, this male child, I will give him back to you. I will make him a Nazarene. A Nazarite. No razor shall come upon him. That means he's fully dedicated to you. He can serve you as priest. I just want a few years with him. Him in my womb. Me nursing him, which usually in those days could be quite long. You know, three, four, five, even some say even six years, whatever. And nurse him. And then when it's time and he's weaned, I will bring him to your temple. He will live there. This temple that I'm praying at. So as she, she was praying like that, Eli watched her, and verse 13, Hannah spoke in her heart. See, God hears your heart. God doesn't just hear your words. doesn't hear just your thoughts. He knows what you're thinking in your heart. And... At first, she got scolding. And then Hannah says, No, my Lord. I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. I've not drunk wine or intoxicating, intoxicating drink, but pour my soul before God. He didn't tell him exactly what he wants, she wants. But he says, I'm just pouring my griefs, my desperation, my suffering. I'm pouring to the Lord. Every one of you who are sick, who experience ailments, incurable sickness, I know being sick is no fun. It's a lot of work, a lot of effort. Simplest things are so hard to do. It's almost suffering to do the most simple things. God knows. God knows. So she was pouring out all her sufferings. And then Elijah says, Go in peace, Lord grant your petition. And something happened in verse 18. The woman went her way, and for the first time, she ate. And her face was no longer sad. I could imagine when she went back that day, Penny now getting ready with all her missiles arm, you know. You know, she would be like a jack fighter, you know, carrying about, you know, how many missiles? Some, some jack fighters carry about six, you know, surface to surface missiles, air to air missiles, or whatever, air to surface missiles. And, uh, and a few, uh, a, re a few, you know, barrage of bombs, and perhaps on top of it, uh, uh, an airline submachine gun and, uh, and all those things and she's all ready to fire you know one of the war things she come and then she come it. she looks different is this Hannah? she's smiling she's happy and she might say turn around and bring her aircraft carrier back <laughs> Alcana that night came back and suddenly the familiar crying and weeping disappeared. And he says, Hannah, are you all right? <laughs> Hannah says, Yes, darling, I'm all right. <laughs> what do you want? Let me give you, serve you some things. <laughs> Whoa. You're all right. Uh, let me check your head. Yeah, I think you're all right. 
ein she was and it so happened that uh, when they went back they worshiped the Lord and it says Alkana knew Hannah and the Lord remembered her that very night Switzerland got remarried to her <laughs> no more neutral ground man and she conceived and her prayer was answered I tell you Penina for the first time very quiet <laughs> says so well this is different now the whole world is going to know about Hannah because of this one son the most famous one of the most famous sons in Israel Samuel who stood with three anointings in his life he judged Israel he mediate Israel between the theocracy and the monarchy he was also a priest and he held the priesthood to turn out a very good priesthood ministry he was also a prophet and he raised up a school of prophets out of which later on Elijah and Elisha and the sons of prophets came from that one prayer was powerful remember what I said the longer it takes God to answer your prayer there is extra credit given for all the years of delay God is a fair God when it comes it pours and, and when she win a child and dedicated the child to the Lord she said this prayer oh this time she sing in chapter 2 and look at her prayer so powerful I tell you this woman can sing 10 verses of song not only that suddenly she prophesied Wow, where did she get all those things from? Because God has turned her sorrow into joy. She says, my heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies. Turn around, right, Penina. <laughs> and God is like, and because I rejoice in your salvation, no one is holy like the Lord. And she said, talk no more so very proudly. Then she turned at Penina. <laughs> it's like she's shooting all the missiles back. While she's worshipping the Lord, she's shooting back all the missiles. And let no arrogance come from your mouth. <laughs> For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And... The bows of the mighty man are broken. And he looks at Penina again. Because <laughs> she's the only enemy she knew. And those who stumble are girded with strength. Those who, have, who were full have hired themselves up for bread. And the hungry have ceased to hunger. Even the barren has mourned seven. She who has many children has become feeble. I am strong still. Oh, more children coming out from me. Oh. Something like that. And uh, says the Lord kills and makes a lie. He brings down to the grave and brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises the poor, leaves the beggar, set them among princes. And, uh, and so forth. And even her last verse, uh, she never released it. The adver adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. <laughs> right. From heaven he will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. 
and so the job ministered unto uh, the Lord. And you know for Hannah, she got five more children. It says the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bought three sons, two daughters. If you count Samuel, then altogether they were five. If you don't, uh, if, you, if Samuel was one of the three sons, but if Samuel was not included, it would be six. So that's not bad. You know, three sons, two daughters, and uh, the child Samuel grew before the Lord. So once the womb was open, you know, every year poop one more. Next year poop one more. Third year poop one more. So every time she comes, she was smile at Penina. Next year. And then, I tell you, she finally had her day. So what is our point to? Give the Lord a reason to answer your prayer. Give the Lord a reason. What's the reason you could give to the Lord? Well, for the first thing, think about his kingdom come and his will be done. Saying, Lord, whatever my life has been, I know some of you have been faithful even in sickness and in uh, different difficult situations. But you say, Lord, let the Holy Spirit give you the knowledge and the idea. But it could be things like, Lord, I will serve you. If you want me to, I'll serve you. Now, you don't have to be afraid even of God calling you. You know why? Because you say, Lord, if you want me to serve you, show me your great provision and guide me. I will follow you. And God will always do that. He never, he never fails to provide. So you never be afraid of the Lord calling you. But you're saying, Lord, if you want me to be in a business, I'll be in business. Want me to be a professional, be want me to serve you, I'll serve you. Let your will be done, your kingdom come. Give God a reason to hear you. But remember, I say again, God doesn't need a reason to hear you. God does not need a reason. He already has a reason to hear you. He loves you. But if you are in desperation, give God a reason. And say, why did Hannah only receive an answer at this time and not previous time? It has to do with this phenomena that I call. When you take care of God's kingdom, God takes care of you. When you take care of others, the energy for you is also provided. In Catherine Kuhlman's meeting, there are a lot of desperate people coming for healing. Some of the most beautiful healings that take place is when those who are really desperate, they look around for someone more desperate. And then they know time is limited. And so they say, Lord, please heal this other guy first. And then the strange thing is what they ask a lot to heal somebody else first. They became more concerned about another person than themselves. They suddenly got healed. They suddenly felt something click, something flow. And they got healed. Which is why tonight I want to teach you about desperation faith. Desperation faith is when you reach a point where you will believe God permanently, but you never give up, but all your hope and faith is only in God. Only He can give you back the life that you want, the health that you want. You do your best with natural health, medicinal health, to gives you some comfort and relief from your pain and symptoms. But your real true dependence is on God for your full healing. 
But the second point is important. Perhaps using the word give God a reason is not a very strong point. But I like to rephrase it that the other side of that is this, in second point. When you look away from yourselves towards others, you become a channel of the same power that you originally wanted. It's almost like, you know, the principle of uh, a piece of wood and uh, the karate, taekwondo, or these martial arts experts, they want to chop that heavy piece of brick or wood. Uh, they don't aim at the wood. They aim at the point below. Because force, which is needed to break whatever is there, force, the calculation is F equals to MA, Newton's law. MA is mass times acceleration. Mass, the only mass you have is the weight of your body that you can put into your fist or your palm. So there is a limited mass. Unless you build up your mass. So that mass multiply by acceleration. So how much your muscle can accelerate. So if you're aiming at this point where the brick or wood is, you're not having maximum acceleration. Because this is your point where you stop. But you aim at a point below, and you make sure that at this point is where maximum acceleration. And at maximum acceleration, the force is great. Sometimes your mass is small, your acceleration is great, it compensates. Because your mass is big, your acceleration could be slower and still can compensate. Which is why, you know, uh, long ago people like Bruce Lee, he's, I, mean, I mean he's a muscular guy, but, but because he's Asian, he's not that big size. And, uh, but yet, he has what you call, you know, the very near punch and can fracture a bone. And people admitted, one of the things that he has was speed which in science we call acceleration and which is higher than speed and so even though he has a small size and small body the speed by which he kick and punch is so deadly that the amount of force can fracture and break your bone and so F equals to MA, it's just an application of scientific law. Now, what we have is this. You need whatever ailment and sickness, you need a lot of power to flow to you. But it's greater to have the power flow through you. And what happens in point two is, when you begin to be concerned about God's kingdom and God's will, which always involves people and caring for people, loving people, when you begin to find a meaning in life, can you imagine what it will be like? Someone who is already sick, still wanting to care for others who are sick. And as I said, told you, I would never put myself through this punishing schedule that I put myself through since July. By the beginning of July, um, I've been really working hard without Sabbath. And uh, while in USA, I remember, um, caught a bit of the uh, bark and flu. And in spite of it, still preach right through because I care more for the sick. I know that God will take care of me anyway when you care for others. In the same way, like when we reached this last week, I said, wow, Lord, I need to really walk in your supernatural strength to get through this week. Tell you, when we get through this week, tomorrow I'll be lying in my bed after the all-night prayer with a big smile on my face. <laughs> ah, we've done it, Lord. You and I, we did it together. Thank you for your strength. We finished the race. We did what, you know, it's not easy to do. 
to take from the revival in July the 4th to bring that same anointing back without stop. Although we have a little thing in uh, um, July, September that we had to do, uh, and some of you were there with us uh, in altar building, but we carry it right through here, and then we finally, of course, we got the last stop in Australia, which is a simpler thing, prayer meeting, which I'm not scheduled to preach. Which means that it is, you know, for me, it is uh, waiting on the Lord, which is good because waiting on the Lord is what I love to do. And you just get energized by God. And uh, so, except for the normal preaching, which is a Saturday, and then, the, um, and then we have the uh, Sunday here and all that, that's, that's just the normal routines. But uh, in caring for others, I could feel the energizing of God. And. Uh, the same way as whatever. Can you imagine that when people thought that you could be of no use to anyone, yet you could find some way or some place in a little place where you care for someone. Part of God's kingdom, part of the will of God, where you don't look into yourself. I mean, you do have a concern for yourself and everyone's concerned for you. But you yourself begin to concern for others. When you follow point two and understand what point two means, you have tapped on the most powerful principle in the universe of God that is both in the natural law and the spiritual law of continuing in the channel of God's power for your life. Because all God's power is never for selfish reasons. All God's power is nev never for selfish ends. Which is why, in general rule, we do not collect love offerings during miracle services. Because it's a service offered free. There's always boxes there for people to give. We have our normal Sundays and all those things. But because we want people to know it is something Jesus did for each one to be given freely and it is important for each one of us to know well of course crusades might be different because crusades involve stadium expenses and all those so this is a minimum thing and all those but because we're using church building here and so it's important for us to know that when we care for others when for a moment our self-consciousness disappear. Now, once you know this point, you mentally try to switch it yourself, it's slightly different when it comes naturally. So, once you know this point, let it sink into you until it becomes natural in your life to bring that forth so that as you care for others, you yourself get healed. And that's the most powerful principle. I could help someone who's desperate. And if you were in Catherine Kuhlman's meeting now, go to Catherine Kuhlman as I gone home to heaven, I will tell you, this will be one of the most important things to open yourself for the special miracles that God wants to release in a shrine auditorium. And because these meetings are greater and will become greater than Catherine Kuhlman's meeting, as we grow and grow, as we go into crusade and all those things, we're teaching ahead right now so that people can always follow online. I know this is how I prepare myself to receive. Besides childlike faith yesterday, it's just the decision to not look. See, sometimes you say, what do I do? I, I don't concentrate so much on my healing. So several things that you have done, which is well, worship God, that's good. But when you love God, you also love people. And then you start also not just praying for yourself. You start praying for others. Imagine a sick person who becomes an intercessor. And say, Oi, why did you come here? Oh, I'm an intercessor. Huh? For yourself? <laughs> no, I already pray enough. Now pray for others. Because I know God has heard me. See, at what, which point do you think God has hurt you? 
there will be a point. Some of you think, oh, at the, uh, I know when God has hurt me when I'm well. Oh, no, no, no. God might have heard your prayer already. He's just deciding when the manifestation comes. So you know in your own heart whether you already prayed and you know the healing is there somewhere. And all you have to do is say, Lord, I'm just going to thank you and obey you. And like I teach in this series, faith because one of actions. Whatever the actions you could do, you do. And the Lord will sustain you. And you add this thing tonight in what I call the cry of desperation. Two points. You reach a point where God is your full trust. Because these are the things, let me tell you. You know, I've been walking with God for a long, long time. With Jesus, I really know our Lord Jesus. His heart, His mind, His heartbeat, how He thinks. And with the Father. And let me tell you this. There are two things that I know please the Father. Because I've been at the throne room, I could feel the impact of some things touching the heart of the Father. Some things do touch Him. Two things. A person who loves with first love and trusts Him with all your heart, mind, soul and strength. Because you know what faith is? Faith involves trust. In the Bible, faith involves so much trust, they risk their entire life. When someone trusts God, 100%, of course, human-wise, we always say 1,000%, but, you know, 100% isn't really all. 100%. With all their heart, all their mind, all their soul, and all of their strength, they trust God. It has an impact in the heart of God. You could feel it in God's heartbeat. Two, when someone gives themselves as an instrument, like Isaiah says, when God says, Whom shall I send? Who will go for me? Isaiah says, Send me. When someone comes to God and becomes as concerned about the kingdom of God and the will of God, which involves caring and loving people anyway, and they line themselves up with God's perfect will, and they line themselves up with God's heart. And they line themselves with God, what God wants to do in another life, not just in their own life. It moves God. Why does these things move God? Because there are very few human beings who do that. And you stand head and shoulders in God's list of those that God says, these are those who love me. These are those who give themselves to me. Throughout the whole Bible, not a single one of the people whom God has used fail in these two qualities. They were asked to give fully of themselves. Some of them started to take parts of themselves back and they falter. Some of them, when God started using and blessing them, they stopped trusting God and trusted themselves. Some of them, when God blessed them, used them, blessed them, they started becoming selfish. And then the process stopped. But if you learn these two processes, to trust God fully, and desperately. Because a desperate person will grasp at a straw. But instead of grasping at a straw, you hold on to God's word, vision, spoken word, 
hand or whatever you have, whatever little faith you have, you use that to hold on to even whatever parts of Jesus, even if it be just a strength of his garment. And your whole life depends on that. And if that's part of Jesus, you're fully safe. That's the trust. Secondly, to allow yourself to be God's channel for someone else. So one day this truth will come. And when, when the Lord instructs, I could see myself in the future in one of the visions. But after teaching like that, and there are a lot of sick people, and then I say, okay, you have never done this? You have been sick, you're caring for yourself? Okay, I want all you sick people right now to lay hands on another sick person. So I say, wow. <laughs> you know, no, but pray for them. And as they do, suddenly God do all kinds of healing. Just to show a point. God sometimes wants to show a point. That, by caring for others, we are helped. So tonight we shall rise up into God in worship. And um, as we rise forth to God in worship, believing God, the first point of desperation, I know many of you have reached that stage. All this preaching and teaching. But tonight as we worship God, I would like you to reach out into the second point. For a moment, not just worship God, but you came for your own ailments or sickness or disease, just for a moment, pray for someone else. Ask God, Lord. And you know those people who pray in Catherine Kumas, I think they are very genuine. Some, they even pray like that. They say, even if I don't get here, it doesn't matter, but I, that guy needs healing more than me. Of course, God will never forget you. But that's how sincere some of those people who pray. And only God can teach us in our heart how to bring that about. And then we become the most unselfish people on earth. We learn to care for others. So let's start worship our Lord in moments like this. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, in D, thank you. Is it in D? D. Give me a D. A key or D? Yeah. In moments like this, I sing out. I sing a, a love song to Jesus in moments like this I live up my hand I live up my hands to the Lord singing I love you love
Tonight, just pray for someone else. Just pick anyone in the congregation. Just pray for them. Pray for someone else, even though you have a need in your life. Lord, let your genuine love and power flow. Allah gabari adi gibiri atiri 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 analamash. Aranga malenga 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 maleng brosti analamanga bari atalabas. Aramanga malenga lamasara lamanga masiara lamash. Rala gianga lamasala langa muri analanga muri aneri atia. Salele alelia ya nalasa Ole ala salana nga maria nga wasa Ole ala mashara maria nga ala la masiri ri 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 Ara manga brava sara la manga maria de remas Here the prayers of Lord of your people Lega bredi gebri gebri ando lo mosti ara la masara la mas nere ata la masara la mas ara la mas gabra basara la ma gabra basiri ara rega la mas ara ma la mas amale gebri ana la ma masara la mas gabra bale gabadi gala mas siri ana ne gala mas ara ma la gabra basti enesti. Alleluia! <laughs> Alamas, <laughs> Allah, let your love and intercession flow. Amaria de la Basiraba. And let healing flow you when I pray one for another. As I pray one for another. La Hashi Gabra Basiara Rabas. Gabra Basara Ramade Garabati Gabra Barabas. Sigi Miriam Alamasara Basa. Aramasara Made Gabade Galabasara Bas. Aramade Galabasiara Rabas. Aramat seri atara bara bara bas seri ana la manga bara bas seri ana la masara bara bas. Oh, the Lord is wonderful, glorious. Arya nega masya nere nega gamash tara masa. Arya nega 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 nega. Arya nega busuru na mole kepe di kile kesti ana la mosh. Ara male gabro bas ti ara la bas, la male gala bas sara la male gala bas, ara male ata la bas tara mas. Thank you Jesus, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, thank you Lord Jesus, thank you for your love, thank you for your intercessions for one another. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful, beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Excellent. Now we like the others, so you who have an ailment to come forward. 
and we're going to do it differently. Just all come up and take your places in the front. Take your places in the front, and those of you with those things that we are called out, come right to the front also. And we're going to create a canopy of healing all along the altar area. So we like you all to come right to the front. Yes. Hello, good sir. Yes. Yeah. Come right over there. Thank you. And he can be there. Yes. And that's a place for shalom. Thank you, Jesus. And others of you, or whatever ailment or need tonight, in our final night of the medical service, we're creating a canopy of healing on this side. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Yes. And shalom. Yeah. You are. And. Yes, uh, Pele, just stand right there, and whatever space there is there, just stand. We're going to create a canopy of healing and a place for the angels to do His work, right? Uh, I know some of you will be catchers and all that, but that's fine, and that's just, that's fine. Make sure all those who have an ailment, you come right to the altar area, and afterward, when we pray, those of you online, you will follow along too. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, those are here, uh, stand here and stand here. Thank you in a row. Uh, thank you. Okay. And those of you in the back, uh, and those of you in the back, we'd like you to also create a canopy from the back in interceding and praying for those who are in this canopy here. And uh, we here in the front are going to stand. And... Uh, we're going to lift our hands over and create a canopy of the Lord over all this. And as you stand in the presence of the Lord, the Lord says that His presence alone is sufficient to bring healing. I remember, great faith does, does not need even the finger or hand to touch you. In the presence of the Lord, you are able to receive the fullness of your healing, even right now. Praise God. Let's create a canopy now. We thank you, Father. And we lift our hands over each one of these as Moses <coughs> lifted up his rod. We're going to symbolically lift the rod onto the people in anticipation of the day that God is bringing forth signs and wonders <coughs> over the people of God. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Lord. Sararabalaka Brahma Siri Adarama Shtiaramas. Right now, those of you standing in the presence of God or sitting in the pre in your uh, wheelchair or whatever, <coughs> begin to receive the anointing of the Lord upon your life. Alinga Brahma Shtiaradama Shiaramarama Siri Adamash. Alamazagabare Galamara Galabagabodi Kibiri Atalamas. Ay, 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 ay. Ay 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 la masia la maragalamas Here are the the Lord is being a work in your heart in your mind in your thoughts Here la bagabra masia in your emotions in your spirit Alama in your body Alama zere ada la magabra masia la magabra mas Alama lenge mere ala la masia la magabra masia na la masia you are in a canopy of healing. Every sickness, every disease are fleeing out from your body. We are driving out all sickness, disease and ailments.
Jesus is walking in our midst, touching your lives. Jesus is walking in our midst, touching your life. Invisible, but real. Hallelujah. Yellow, 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 yellow
የሎሮ ደስቲያ የሎሮ ደስቲያና ወንደ ደጋስቶ ሞይ ኢነሎ ገገድ ክላሴ የሎ ደስቲያ ለወሽታ ነለጋስቲ አለነሰረ ገለገለ ጋስቲያ የገለ ጋስቲያ ለለወስ የገለ ጋስቲያ ለለስተ የገለ ጋስቲያ ለወስ ከለማስያ ለለመስ ከለማስያ ለለቀው ከለማስቴ ከለማስቲያ 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 ለለጋስቴ ከለማስቲያ ለለስ የለያት ለስቴ ከለማስቴ ከለማስቲያ ለለጋስ ከለጋሽያለ ለመገረበስ አሌሉያ 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 ለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለለ
Karamada Gabas, Karamada Galabas, make sure they catch us for when the when the people move around, make sure that someone will catch them. Do not pray from behind. Don't pray from behind. Pray from in front. This way. Laba has a gap. Both hands. This way. Thank you. Use both hands. That's it. That's it. Pray from the front. Pray from the front. Yes. They're sending people to lay hands on you. Right now, hands are laid on you. Receive. I show you how when you pray you can sense the presence of the Lord and you hold the presence of the Lord not just touch but hold the presence of the Lord continue worshipping hold the presence of the Lord and as you hold your hands over the presence of the Lord increase so it's not just Lay hands, but hold until they fully receive, then you move to the next person. See, she's being touched, she's flowing along, and you hold, and you hold, and then suddenly you leave your hands there for a while. Thank you, Lord. Sharamada Mari Gibiri Adalamash. Thank Oh Jesus, Jesus, we create a canopy of presence, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Sharada Maragalabas, Sharada Maragalabas. We worship you. We worship. 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 We We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Continue to worship. Sometimes when you worship and we get people to lay hands on you, it seals the fullness of that which God is doing in your life. Oh. Holy, 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 
Take a brush. Take a brush. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Salega Mariana Mas. Sare Merega Maragala Mas. Shara Malaga Brabasiara Mara Mara Mas. Shara Malaga Brabasiara Mas. Shara Malaga Briana Maragala Mas. Jesus, Sara Marega Briatelias. Shara Marega Briatelias. Alama Seria Teria Teria Telabas. Amade Galaba Seria Telabas. Amade Galama Saranabas. Nere Galama Shara Marale. Ariane Gamastiane Mashtua. Ostaliana Nasa. Ostala Mariana. We worship you, Lord. Jesus, magnify you, Lord. Jesus, we glorify you. Jesus, you are the one of all the ages. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Shara Maria, 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 Rama Maria, Rama Rama Rama, Ale Maria Rama, Shara Malanga Masti Rama, Sada Malanga Rama, Ora Malanga Rama, Shara Masti Rama, Sari Arega Masti Rama, Rama Sada Rama, Shara Masti. Ala barabas tada ramada mas, ala 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 asti aramas, shara malaga Maria aramas, shara marege biri aramas, yes ala ramahashi aramas, namasti aramale kebiri atiri atiri aramas, yes Lord, shara mara mara masya, namasti ala ramada mara. Shara Maramas, Allah, Glora Bahasya Ramas. Thank you, Lord. Nara Bahasara Ramas, Yara Ramas. Ara Madhe Kara Mas, Yara Ramas. Ara Madhe Kala Bash, Yara Bat, Yara Ramas. Ara Mala Kabro Bash, Yara Ramam, Kabro Bas, Yara Ramas. I am the love that He loved me. I am the love that He loved. Send my word to your disease.
Thank you, Lord. You touch the spirit, souls, and bodies of each one in ways that only you can. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Touch me and me. Continue to look forward, upwards, to your left and to your side. And you stand in the presence of God. As you keep looking around, it restores more and more of your sight. Thank you, Lord. If it's too high, go to half. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Let's just continue and let the Lord do His work in our midst. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Something happened And now I know He touched me And made me whole He touched me Step here. Step onto the platform. Yes. I may be Now you're in the bright lights. You see light all over you. Continue to see. The lights are going to increase. And Continue to look up at the lights and look down and then look to the left and like to the right. You will see shadows but you begin to see more and more light as you open your eyes. Continue to stand in God's presence here. That's the presence of God all over you. And uh, Colleen, come and stand next to Him all the time. Be with him all the time. Just stand beside him. Yes. And let the Lord do a work and finish his work. Just be patient with the Lord. You receive the maximum and all the energizing that God has upon your life. We are here with you. When you're sick, you're sick. When you're whole, you're whole. When you're healed, you're healed. Whether it take five minutes, ten minutes, Half an hour, one hour, we stand with you. It's the last of our miracle service, and that's why we want to stand and let the presence. You cannot get this kind of presence again. And just enjoy the presence. Let the presence soak into you. That wholeness, that healing, that fullness, let it soak into you. Touch all of it. And now I know He touched me and made me whole. He touched me. Oh, He touched me. I know. Joy. 
Jesus for your touch it is your hand that touch him let your same hand increase 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 thank you Lord in your touch in his life thank you Lord and now touch me he touch me I may Go to the stanzas or so. Thank you, Lord. Since I'm at this blessed Savior, since He cleansed and made me whole, I will never see. Shout in what eternity rains. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Oh, the joy. And now I know He touched me. Amen. Thank you for DNA healing, Lord. Thank you for repairing all the DNA. Yes, Lord. Feeling good, sir? Feel what? No worries. The Lord touch. Bless you. Amen. God bless you. spend the next few minutes just worshiping our Lord thanking him for whatever he has done however greatly he has touched you whatever little he has touched you it is a beginning of his miracle in your life just give him thanks just give him worship just give him praise for a moment of time just give him your love just give him your adoration and just adore him. Give it, 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 give it,
Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. Thank you for all that you have done. And for many of them here, Father, in that which you have begun to do, some of them receive complete healing. Some of them receive the beginning of their healing. And we thank you, Father, that just as we've seen in many lives, that you begin to strengthen them. And they begin to recover. And they begin to see more and more of your power and signs. Even as they wake up every morning and do their daily things. We thank you, Lord, for some of them. They're going to see the fullness of your healing come forth. Over the days, over the weeks. And they're going to see, Father God, the healing continues without a bait. And the healing continues from strength to strength, glory to glory. Amen. We thank you, Father. Let that which you have begun in your life. You are the author and the finisher of your faith. You have never done something halfway. You have always complete everything that you do. So we thank you and we proclaim Jesus is the author and the finisher of the faith of each one here. And we thank you that which you authored, you began, you have to finish. Thank you for your many words. Thank you for your gentleness of your love. Thank you for your great compassions. Thank you for your touch over every spirit, every soul, and every one of our physical bodies. We indeed can feel the change and the transformation that you have done in our life. So we praise you, Lord. And we worship you. At the end of the day, we know what can we say. What can we say, God, but to thank you and to love you and to worship you. 
Oh Father, even as we pronounce the benediction over your people, even as we pronounce your blessing on your people, the Lord speaks to each one of you, and this is His word. Remember my word to the ten lepers as they continue on their way to show themselves to the priest. They were perfectly healed. So know that the Lord says He hasn't finished all the work in your life. Let your faith continue to rise. I know that He is continuing the work in your life. Even as you go about every day in your daily life, even as you go about doing all that you would normally do in your life, know that the Lord, the Lord continues. Know that the Lord continues upon your life. Continue to do a mighty work of healing, a mighty miracle, because He's showing Himself as a God of miracles. And He that alter your faith and miracle will walk with you day by day until the fullness and completion of His work in your life. Ask of the Lord not His reasons why He choose to do some things in His own way. But know surely that the Lord will hold your hand and lead and guide you into the green pastures that you so desire to lie upon. For the Lord knows your heart, your life, your faith, and He knows your tribulation, the cause, the pain, the suffering. And His love for you is so great, so great. And He will continue. That's what the Lord says. He will continue that which has begun in your life to see to its full completion. So rest assured that His love, His grace, His mercies, His angels, His presence is with you day by day. For you have really entered into the miraculous. And you will know that your walk with God from this day forward is not the same. You have walked with the God of the Bible. And you are now part of the living Bible that the Lord is creating. Thank you, Father. With that word, Father, we thank you. I lay the blessings of the Lord in all the fullness. Healing grace and the angels of each one present here be strengthened. And all the gifts anointings, empowerment, and human, creative miracles, healing works, bone structure, organs, tissues, impartations, and all the various myriad ways you're doing, a thousand and one healings, even those online. Let it be unto them according to your word. Let your perfect will be done. Let your kingdom come and establish your kingdom in this place and in each of these lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah.